Okay. Hello, and welcome to a playthrough of the game Legend of Zelda Minish Cap off my Game Boy Player on the GameCube. Okay, first off, uh, I had to say to my, all my subscribers in the past, uh, I'm sorry I've been away for a long time, I've been busy with school and college, but now I have free time, so I'm going to start a playthrough series on all the Legend of Zelda games. Now, why am I doing a playthrough on, on all the Legend of Zelda games? Well, because of all the recent news with Skyward Sword and Ocarina of Time 3D coming out, I decided I really have a z I really have a want to play all the Legend of Zelda games again. It's like um back in uh, 2005 when I was waiting for uh, Twilight Princess to come out, I played all the Legend of Zelda games I currently had then. So I'm playing all the ones I have now in anticipation for Skyward Sword, basically. Now, unlike most Zelda games, this one starts out pretty calmly. Probably the most calm of any games. Except I can't say that because I have entirely because I haven't played Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, or Link's Awakening. But this one has the most gentle opening of like a normal day. Like it's not like Ocarina of Time where you're an abandoned child in the woods, or Majora's Mask where you're traveling alone in the forest, or um Wind Waker where your sister is kidnapped pretty quickly. This starts out like a normal day. Like, you don't expect really anything to go wrong, but of course, if you're a Zelda player, you know something's gonna go wrong. Anyways, in this game, Zelda actually knows Link personally from the beginning. And that's because they go to the same school in this game. It says so in one of the miniature statue figurines, but we'll talk about those later. But basically, Zelda and Link are good friends in this game. That's pretty interesting considering in most of the other games, they don't really know each other until the midpoint of the game, or until some later point in the game. It's usually never right in the beginning. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about uh, Zelda theories, since that's a lot of what Legend of Zelda fans do when waiting for new games to come out, is theorizing about the timelines. So, people are confused when it comes to Zelda timelines, and let me explain why. First off, people try to fit everything together, and that's sort of doable, but not entirely. Because the way Nintendo makes games, for at least Legend of Zelda, is they go about making the gameplay first, and then they make the story around the gameplay. But, because they do that, not everything falls into place exactly. So some things can be connected to games coherently without too much trouble, but some things can't. And that's why you have um, different timeline theories. Like, there's, there, the most uh, popular theory is that there are different timelines entirely. Like, several timelines for, different, for all the uh, different Zelda styles. Like, the stories of Vadi are separated into one of their own timelines. The stories of, um, the main the stories with Ganondorf are in their own timeline and such. It's sort of weird. And it's all in the theory to make them all connect exactly, and make them connect perfectly. It's very odd, and I don't get it, because Nintendo generally works to make them broadly relatable. They don't work to make them specifically relatable, not entirely, anyway, from what I understand from interviews with uh, Miyamoto and Anuma. Oh. But anyways, this game's going on, well, you're taking Zelda t to the Picori Festival, and Picori are little people in the game we later meet. But of course they're not called the Picori, they're actually called the Minish. They're called the Picori because their dialect sounds like that. So particularly nothing really fancy is going on. Just showing around Zelda to all the different booths and stalls. Or well, she's showing us around. 
Also introducing you to the idea of what these Pikori are. And yes, there was a sword fighting tournament, which introduces our main villain of the game. Okay, let's start talking about game mechanics. First off, the shield, since that's the first thing we get. Now, the shield, I've only used it for deflecting Diku Nuts and a couple of projectiles every now and then. But I rarely use it because you have to hold down a button to actually use it. And as a result, I've never used it that much except to deflect Diku Nuts to talk to the uh, Diku Scrubs that sell stuff, or give you hints. So, it's shields sort of seem pointless in this game to me at least. I don't know. How often do you use, use the shield at least if you've played this game? Anyways, we're gonna get out of here and now of course this music changes. And here's the Deku scrub. Now again, the only reason I use the shield is to deflect Deku Nuts, and that's pretty much it. And this is the minister, Minister Pulsal, that's right. Yeah, basically he's the, uh, he's the Hyrule version of, uh, the guy with the glasses from Wind Waker who always held that book. Can't remember his name. It's not Nico. Nico's the other guy. Hmm. Anyways, here's a ceremony involving the Picori Blade, as they call it. Essentially what they're doing is, uh, the sword is basically the key to Pandora's box, and it keeps it sealed, but if you were to pull it out or something, it would basically unlock Pandora's box. Which makes me wonder, why the hell would you let anyone touch it even at these festivals? Because every year they hold a tournament, and whoever wins gets to touch the Pokori Blade. And that sort of seems stupid, because the person could potentially unlock Pandora's box. And now here's our villain, Vadi. And strangely, one thing you'll notice is that they took the laugh from the Happy Mask salesman shop in Majora's Mask and used that for his laugh. And I don't get why they did that. Well, well, obviously they were probably just recycling cycling, uh, voice clips. But um, it's, just, it's just weird to hear that laugh come out of Adi. And now he basically opens Pandora's box. Because up until this point, basically there were no monsters in the world. 
from what I understand. And that's why some people think this game comes before Ocarina, because monsters didn't exist in the world until Pandora's box was opened again and released all the monsters that were that had been sealed inside, including Moblins, which have been seen as uh, Ganondorf's minions, and stuff like that. And Vadi doesn't find what he's looking for because he looked at the wrong place. And now that we've recovered from being... You know what's strange about that is that the spell was meant to hit Zelda, but still, it hit us and just knocked us out of the way, but turned Zelda to stone. But anyway, but if Link was turned to stone, then we will not have a game, so I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, oh yeah, also the king is basically a sprite version of the king from uh, Wind Waker. Can't remember his name, though. Daltus, maybe? I think that's what it is. Can't remember. But anyways, he's gonna send Link on the quest to find the Bakori, or of course the Minish, as they're supposed to be called. And he leaves it up to us because no one has seen the Bakori except for children. But that's not entirely true. The point is, um, because the Minish technically live everywhere in Hyrule. They live in the mountains, they live in Hyrule Castle Town, they live in the Minish Woods, they live everywhere. The problem is, no one sees them because they they chose they choose not to be seen I think even kids haven't seen them even though they're in Hyrule Town so the point I'm trying to make is I think it's sort of um, misconception that only kids can see the Minish it's just that you really have to look to find the Minish or you have to be small enough to see to go to where the Minish live which is usually the case with what Link has to do, because he can't walk over to the Minish City. That's not possible. He has to shrink down to their size to get access to those places. So now we have our basic sword and the broken blade, so we can repair them. And so the soldiers will search for Vadi while we go and search for a way to repair the broken blade. So those are where we need to go. Those woods will be where we find the first bits of Picori and such, or Minish. Ugh, keep saying Picori. Anyway. That's pretty much it for this part. Thank you for watching. If you are a subscriber, again, I'm sorry for taking so long to return, but I've been busy. And to everyone watching, I hope you enjoyed this and you continue to watch. So thanks for listening.